it's very easy for people to talk about war because they watch war on television almost like you watch a sport. That's the way we see it. You see the highlights, you see some pictures, and then we go on with our lives. But for me, to sit here with you and with your family, and I can feel war. Every day uh, I know that it's more, more than one, two hundred uh, Ukrainian soldiers just died because, because I don't know why. For what? For what? Yeah. Every turn tells a story, and every story is unique. My turn gives people in our global community a chance to share theirs. Join me, Salema Masekela, as we explore these stories from around the world. This is my turn. It is hard to believe, but the conflict in Ukraine has been taking place for over a year now. On February 24, 2022, Russia invaded Ukraine and kicked off a war that has affected the entire planet. Six million people within Ukraine displaced in the country, and eight million have had to flee as refugees looking for shelter throughout Europe and the rest of the world. When you think about that number, though, of eight million people, you wonder what it might be like to have to restart your life. We're gonna meet a young man named Dima, who is 13 years old, and he is a snowboarder. Perhaps the most promising snowboard athlete to come from Ukraine. We're gonna meet Dima and his family, learn a little bit about their journey and his aspirations, because Dima's not your average talent. This is a kid who probably could end up being the first Ukrainian athlete to go to the Olympics in snowboarding. Today is hot, and yesterday was, uh snowy and it's like combined the slash with fresh snow and it's super strange i want to do hard way 370 but it's super huge i really want to do it hey, what is this the trampoline i'm alexey pidmarak i'm a father of dima lutkin uh, how i told i'm a coach i'm a father i'm a sometimes i'm a master sometimes uh, i'm a chef sometimes i'm a filmer and many times I'm a serviceman, I'm boxing his board every day because he is lightweight and I must do it. You hear me? You need to do the same, but you have to do it from the This is my stepson. He just uh, learned really fast. I, I, don't, I don't meet uh, other kids who start like Dima before. The Dima can be the really pro snowboarder in the future. I'm just, deci I'm just decided and uh, we're going to work. <laughs> Dima has been snowboarding since he was eight. Once Alexei discovered his skill level though, they began training harder and competing. With limited competitions in Ukraine, Alexei entered Dima into his first competition in Europe where Dima got first. Dima participated, tried to win it, and he is winning it. And then we decided, okay, we just go into snowboarding like a professionals. Right? Yeah? Yeah, that's what happened. I feel like this is much more fun than just sitting in the office and uh, like sitting. You, you think about it? Yeah? Eight hours a day, just writing something, talking and <laughs> typing. I think it's much more fun. Dima and his family have been in Innsbruck for a little over a year, but the journey to get here wasn't an easy one. When the war started, where, where were you and Dima mm -hmm. um, when the family was in, in Kiev? Uh, we, we are training, we're preparing to the competition in Germany. It's the last of, uh, day of our training in Flachau, in Absolute Park, the war is started. First of all, I think about to go to Ukraine straight, but if I go to Ukraine now, I'm just staying there. The woman can moving out from Ukraine, but not men. So I'm just be on, on the phone with Svetlana every 
every day and uh, just instruct what to do, how to extract from Ukraine now. I'm just seeking where the Russian troops, where the Russian tanks on the map in Ukraine, you know, and I'm just, oh no, don't go this road. Just try to go to the another city, another town. You have your young son and your, your wife in this place, and you're giving instruction to Svetlana from what you're seeing on the news to get, yeah. to get yeah, her yeah, out. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, it was really terrible road. It, it took six days and we went by car. How did you find out that you could have a, a, a way to live here in Innsbruck? I just tried to write my friends who live in Europe and we find uh, our friends, it is uh, Slava, you remember? Yeah. And she has a friend uh, who riding on snowboard and make uh, some movies on free ride on um, Kamchatka. Ah, you know. yeah, no Kamchatka. Yeah, and uh, that guys have a friend in Innsbruck and he helped us to find the flat. So through the snowboarding community, yeah. you were able to yeah. find yeah. a yeah. way to live yeah. here. Yeah. Snowboarding is a global family. Yeah. Yeah. That's, uh, that's very, very powerful. So do you think that you've gotten a lot better in this last year? Much more better. Because when I were in Ukraine, I could do like sevens and pretty rarely and nines. And when, when we came here, we, I just learned like in a half of the year, I learned so much new tricks. Dima, there's never been a pro snowboarder from Ukraine that has made it to the international level and, and you know, X Games, like you talked about your goals, uh, Olympics. What would it mean to you if you got to be the first? It would be like a miracle, you know. It would be just amazing. I don't know how to explain this. It would be history. Dima is in a unique position where he's able to benefit in his being displaced from Ukraine. His progression over the last year has tripled, and at the age of 13, he's setting himself up for a promising run at professional snowboard. What do you think about this place the first time you came here? Um, beautiful, like absolutely beautiful. What is the most difficult part uh, about ad adjusting to a new life in a new country with a new language and yeah, different yeah. culture? It's uh, really complicated uh, without uh, any people who can, who can speak Ukrainian. We have no any communication with the uh, outside world. <laughs> right. Are you, are you learning the language? I have uh, four lessons a day in school. Four lessons a day in, in Yeah, in that's so exhausting. How does this school compare to your school in Ukraine? Like here is much more comfortable than in our school. And the schools in Ukraine is like pretty old, and here are much more new. We have uh, four lessons of German every day. It's like a different group of people which are came here to Austria and want to live here, and they have to learn German like to do something and it's one of those people. So there's other people here from Ukraine as well? Yeah, there's like three guys from Ukraine. Of the roughly 40 million Ukrainians living in the country before the war, nearly 8 million have fled the country as of March 2022. Those lucky enough to escape are now spread across the globe in pursuit of refuge. This is Dima, uh. and the, it is best friends. Uh, this boy now in Poland, these two boys now in Israel is uh, never to stay now. And this boy in Switzerland. Is All because of the war. Because of the war. Canada yeah. to yeah. Israel. Canada, Canada, Israel, Poland, uh, Switzerland, England, Italy. Yeah, England.
happy times before the war. Mm. Anybody thinking, oh, it is mountains around, it is really beautiful. But not if you, if you, not exactly if you refuge. So even though you have this place where when you come here, you, you see the beauty, yeah. it, it can't erase the, the, the pain in your heart from, from missing your home. You, you're really right. When you are sad, you can look at those pictures and it will cheer you up, make you happy. Remember the times, how it was. Mm. And then you can keep going. How does that push you in your writing? It's pushing me to appreciate the things w what are happening and the place I'm in. Like when I was in Ukraine, there was no opportunity to to train and do the things. And now I have all all what I need. Such good style. What I like is the style. Yeah. The Dima have in, in his age, he is really style like an uh, adult rider, you know? Yeah, he's <laughs> like a very, very adult rider. How would you say your relationship with snowboarding is now, after the war and this situation that you were put in from before? It's a, it's a, it's a, it's a some part of really relaxing for my soul. Then I grab him and said, let's go to right. It's the medicine. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. It's the good medicine. <laughs> yeah, man. <laughs> I had a feeling coming into this episode that because of the sensitivity of the subject matter, of the war in Ukraine, it would be different. To be able to really appreciate through this interesting lens of war, the power of the snowboarding community. You know, the fact that they were able to escape and find peace and solace here in Innsbruck because of snowboarding. And to see young Dima having this very interesting almost benefit of something so horrible in that he gets to focus and, and progress in the manner that he is here in Austria uh, is crazy. I think I'm lucky because I have my family here now. But sometimes I'm just, I don't know, I'm just looking at that picture and so many Ukrainian people now just died on the wall every day, day by day. And that's the part that we don't see. Yeah. But it's happening yeah, every day. Yeah, every day. Uh, war is terrible. <laughs> Make peace. Yeah. Yeah. You're a lucky man, Dima. Yeah. You got wonderful parents. Yeah, and I have to appreciate. Oh, really? <laughs> <laughs> now it's on video. And whenever you mess up, you can play it back to say, didn't you say this that you appreciate and you have to appreciate? I have it here on tape. <laughs> Yeah, he's saying that uh, hard way is easy. You, you do it. Cool battery now. <laughs> this is way more cooler. This is way more cooler than Hot Pie. <laughs> 
my competition. It feels like another world. It just opened another window for me.